taking a look at the Xperia Z1s, it looks like Sony has paid a lot of attention to what users want. And the Z1s will appease both the stylish and fashionable as well as the more conservative and understated business minds alike. From the front, we can see that the design is um, is occupied by a large slab of glass so you do have a very large display with minimal side bezels so this does have a 5 inch full HD 1080p display so text and images will be crisp and vibrant and it does have a very high resolution screen. The one interesting thing to note about the Z1S is that Sony isn't using just a traditional LCD IPS display or even a traditional Samsung um, style AMOLED display for its flagship. Instead, it's borrowing the display technology from its existing Bravia line of HD TVs. So here you're gonna have a tri-luminous uh, display which should render colors more vividly and accurately on the screen while being more power efficient. So what you have in, a, um, in actuality when using this display is that um, you have a larger gamut of color and dynamic range so colors will tend to um, have less banding to them if you have rich saturation as we do on this home screen and also you're going to have um, more vibrancy and more accurate colors as Sony's marketing claims um, will have you believe about the triluminous display. In either case, when we're actually using the smartphone, we didn't really find that there's too much of a difference between a uh, traditional LCD IPS display and the triluminous. Viewing angles were generally excellent on both displays, and with the triluminous, um, it does tend to wash out a little bit under the extreme bright sun in California. However, in normal use, um, the experience is pretty comparable and the color saturation was pretty good. So. Um, it looks like triluminous is what Sony's trying to do with LCD technology with what Samsung's doing with AMOLED with its uh, full HD Super AMOLED panel on the competing Galaxy S4 and now the Galaxy S5 smartphones. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back. Moving between the Sony Xperia Z1, which is sold international and unlocked in the US, um, to the Z1S, it looks like Sony did away with the glass panel on the back. Instead, on the back now you have a plastic panel, um, and the move actually um, may seem like it's um, a downgrade, but in actuality, using plastic on the back makes the phone a little bit more durable, so when you're dropping the phone on its back, um, the backside will be less likely to break or shatter. Additionally, as the back is molded into the um, to the side bezels, um, there's less chance of the phone uh, suffering from water damage, which was a common theme with the Xperia Z. Moreover, with the, uh, with the plastic back, Sony has managed to shave some weight off of the phone, so it's a little bit lighter now in the hand, so it's a little bit more comfortable and ergonomic. You still have a nice, smooth, and glossy finish, which gives uh, the Z1S and, and the Z1 with its uh, glass backing um, a very premium feel. Both phones do attract quite a fair bit of lint, especially with its piano black uh, glossy finishes. So if you're using the phone and putting it in your pocket, both the front glass panel and the rear plastic panel will attract some lint and dust on it, which will become very noticeable on the phone. Moving around the side edges, Sony has managed to um, make the phone waterproof and in doing so, it's covering up a lot of the ports and um, a lot of the slots with uh, plastic covers. So here on the right or on the left spine of the phone, you have um, a plastic cover for the micro USB charge and sync port, as well as for a micro SDXC uh, card slot. So you can augment the storage capacity of the phone with an external memory card. Internally, the phone does support 32 gigs of onboard storage, but now you can add a 64 gig card or even a newer 128 gigabyte card slot to give this phone even more storage, which would be great for capturing images and videos using the 20.7 uh, megapixel, so essentially a 20 or 21 megapixel camera on the rear. We're gonna go ahead and talk about the camera in just a second, but let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the hardware even further. So here you have magnetic uh, 
pins here. So if you buy a docking accessory, um, you not only will have access to a desktop dock to have the phone in landscape mode on your desk, but also this is very convenient in that you don't have to remove and replace the charge and sync port every time or every night when you charge your phone. Instead, you can just drop it into the dock and not have to fumble around with opening and closing these ports. On the opposite spine, on the uh, right side, you're going to have a covered port here. This port is for the uh, micro SIM card slot, so you're going to need a T-Mobile US SIM to connect to the carrier's 4G uh, network. And there's also a trio of buttons on this side. So here in the Chrome, you have a power button, and just below it, you have a volume up and down button, and then right here, discreetly in the phone, you have a dual stage camera shutter button. When I'm using the phone, I notice that sometimes I'm accidentally pressing the volume button instead of the power or pressing the power instead of the volume buttons because these buttons are so close and hard to feel around um, when you're using the phone or fumbling around with the device at night and trying to turn it on or off. In terms of the camera shutter key, um, while it does work to activate the camera quickly, even when the display is off, just pressing and holding it for a few seconds will launch the camera, and uh, Sony did a great job with the camera UI and some of the interfaces. However, it was a little bit mushy, and sometimes it was hard to press the camera shutter key, so that's another complaint that I had with the camera. But overall, I do appreciate having the camera key, especially on a camera-centric phone, as it allows quick access to the camera. Um, where some devices like the um, Galaxy S4 uh, or even some of the LG phones where you have to either um, unlock the phone or have a camera widget. So you do have to turn on the device first. But this gives the um, Xperia Z1S um, more of a Windows phone feel in that you can quickly uh, launch the camera even when the display is off. The phone itself is powered by a quad-core um, Snapdragon 800 processor, which is one of the most powerful processors on the market today. So you do have plenty of computing power, a slim and elegant design, as well as a waterproof body, along with an excellent camera. It's a, it has Sony's G-Lens branding. So G-Lens is what Sony uses in some of its more professional uh, DSLR cameras, and having the G-Lens branding gives the camera a little bit more um, competing power against uh, Nokia's Windows Phone Lumia, which has a Zeiss optics from uh, Carl Zeiss. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, camera software interface here, which is um, where the interesting magic happens with this camera. So Sony has a number of different modes, and unlike Samsung where they just loaded up the camera with every imaginable feature, it looks like Sony has carefully thought out and is selecting the camera features based on what users would want or would want to see in a camera. So you do have um, more of a thought out um, thought out modes for the camera. So you have an info eye, which is similar to uh, Google Goggle, which is an app on Android where you can scan barcodes, QR codes, book covers, and DVD covers, and it will analyze um, the image, um, the scanned image to give you um, basically a result of what you're seeing. So if you're scanning in a, a barcode, it will tell you what the barcode is for. So if you're shopping around and you need to know more information about a product, um, the info eye is a great feature. So one of the more interesting modes is an artificial reality or augmented reality mode called the AR effect. And essentially it just gives you an overlay of um, some cool effects. So if you have um, a Jurassic Park themed party and you want to overlay, you know, just an image of a dinosaur or something on, um, you can kind of see it pop on and off. So. So here you can see, you know, just pan around and you can see there's T-Rex, there's a volcano, and it just overlays these images on top of what you're seeing in reality. So you can have a child posing with the scene in the background or in the foreground, and it just gives it a more interesting effect. Other modes included in the camera include just a sweeping panorama, which makes it easier to take panoramic shots, um, a background defocus to give it a more DSLR um, style uh, image where you can focus in on a face if it's a portrait and then blur out the background and the foreground. So it gives it a nice artistic feel and allows this camera to compete against some of the uh, nicer full-featured uh, point-and-shoot cameras on the market today. 
And then there's also a social life, um, which allows you to broadcast um, live what you're seeing through the camera. So you can broad broadcast a live video feed um, to your Facebook account. So this allows you to share moments live and in real time with your social network and your audience that way. In my use with the camera, um, the one thing that um, Sony doesn't really make clear is that the camera actually records um, images or photos in 8 megapixel resolution maximum when you're using some of these smart and creative modes. So Intelligent Auto is actually a nice mode um, in that it just automatically detects um, what's going on around. So if I just cover the lens up a little, it's going to switch to a low light mode because it's going to it's going to know that there's not enough ambient light. And if I move my finger around a lot, it's going to switch to sport mode because it knows there's quick moving action. So in order to benefit from um, Sony's low light intelligent auto or superior auto, um, you're going to need to take pictures in a reduced quality so it doesn't actually make use of the full 20.7 megapixel camera sensor that's on the Xperia Z1S. In order to take advantage of the full camera sensor, you're going to have to um, switch to manual mode, which then you can go ahead and have settings to adjust the resolution to a maximum of a 20.7 megapixel image. So while you can switch to the higher resolution, um, you don't get some of the cool effects or tools and the intelligent auto mode won't allow you to um, have the same resolution power. In terms of customizations, um, Sony doesn't give you some of the overtop customizations as LG and Samsung. So unfortunately, even with this five inch screen, you're not gonna get some of the more powerful multitasking capabilities that we covered on the LG G2, the LG G Flex, the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, as well as the Samsung Galaxy S4 in recent times. However, you do have options to personalize your display, um, to personalize your experience. So when you go into the personalization menu, under settings, you can change the theme, the wallpaper, the lock screen, and if you just change the theme, it allows you to just quickly change um, not just the background color, but you know, fully skin your device with the color that you want. So if you're a blue person, um, you can go ahead and customize it. So now the top door is blue um, and just various different things. So it gives it a more cohesive look. In terms of preloaded apps, you're going to get a number of T-Mobile preloaded apps, including visual voicemail, um, apps for um, your T-Mobile account, name caller ID, which um, gives it more of a real caller ID feature. So even if a name isn't stored in your phone book, um, it's going to pull the network to find what the caller ID is. Um, Sony also bundled a couple of its own apps, including um, a PlayStation mobile app. So you have um, your PlayStation or your PSP experience on this Xperia Z1S smartphone. You'll also get uh, Sony's Movies app, a Movies Unlimited or Videos Unlimited app, as well as a um, Walkman app, which gives you access to an unlimited uh, sh streaming music service through Sony as well. So you have um, additional sources to find more digital content, including music and videos through the Sony um, services, in addition to the Google Play services that come pre-bundled with this Android smartphone. And then um, to customize the app, um, you do have um, in your app drawer here, you do you can swipe between the different pages. And if you swipe over from the left-hand side, you can go ahead and sort the applications um, the way that you want it. So Sony does give some tweaks over the basic Android 4.3 um, user interface, but the tweaks are more minimal than what you would expect to find on a flagship smartphone. So for Android purists, this is actually a very good thing. In terms of the camera experience overall, I found that images were a little bit soft and focused. Let's go ahead and take a look at the photo gallery. And again, you can go to gottobemobile.com to visit our full review of um, of this uh, smartphone where we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the more detailed images and analyze them for you. But just to... In terms of the overall camera experience, I found the results to be a little bit mixed despite having a uh, a very high resolution 20.7 megapixel camera with the G lens and a single LED flash. I found that the camera on the 
Sony Xperia Z1S captured images with mixed results. Let's go ahead and open the camera album and see what I mean. Um, in general, let's go ahead and take a look at this image here that I took at Stanford University at the Arts Museum there. Um, the background of this photo should have been a very dark and rich blue, and when captured on the camera, um, it translates to a bluish gray um, overtone, and the reds supposed to, were supposed to have been um, more bright and vivid in this image, and yet it's a little bit more muted on this camera sample. Again, you can go to gottobemobile.com where we're going to be posting our full written review with our full thoughts and even all, uh, many of these camera samples that you're going to see here on this video. So be sure to check that out um, when you're uh, perusing for sample images for the Xperia Z1S. These images were taken without um, the LED flash because we were indoors in a museum and I wanted to test out the low light quality. And in general, images had a great deal of detail retention and since I use intelligent auto mode or superior auto, um, the images were captured with an eight megapixel resolution. So despite not using the full sensor, you can see a lot of detail. Um, however, when you start zooming in a little bit more, you can, will see that uh, a, quite a bit of noise starts creeping in once the um, available camera or the available light on the camera uh, starts to slow down. And when you're actually taking images, this is using the AR effect mode. So you're overlaying images. So I'm thinking this is one of the um, the images with the mushrooms and you're in a wooded forest. So this actually gives you a little bit of an idea of how um, the images will turn out. In general though, I was pleasantly um, surprised with how good the images were, but when you're comparing it against a broader array of smartphones, including those from Samsung with a 13 megapixel resolution camera or Nokia's 20 or 41 megapixel camera, um, Sony still has a bit of work to do to optimize um, the low light and the processing. So software wise, um, the camera could be improved um, to handle low light situations better. This camera, unlike many of the cameras from Nokia and the LG G2, doesn't have optical image stabilization, so it does rely on digital image stabilization. So with digital stabilization, you're not gonna get as good of results um, in low light as you would on competing smartphones with OIS, including the HTC One. Um, however, you do have um, some help there, so it's good, but you're not gonna get um, as impressive as of a result in low light situations. So the camera performed excellent and using the eight megapixel down sampled images or over sampled images, um, you can still see a lot of details and Sony did a fantastic job with the camera here. Serious photographers might wanna consider other brands such as Nokia's um, Lumia or even the LG G2 for their camera powers. Again, visit us at gottobemobile.com for the full review as well as the full camera samples. I'm Chung Wen for Gotta Be Mobile. Thanks for watching this video review of the Sony Xperia Z1S.